Croak. I'm the CEO of the Bucks County Association of Realtors. I am very pleased to welcome you today to our virtual session with Dr. Lawrence Yoon, who will be sharing his thoughts with us about the economic and real estate market outlook. This event is the third in a series of member events sponsored by the Education Committee of BCAR, and you should watch your email for future events. We have record attendance today and all who have joined the event have been muted. We're asking everyone to please stay muted throughout the event. Questions are encouraged and can be asked in the chat section, which you can find if you hover your mouse at the bottom of your Zoom page. Uh, a toolbar will appear with a chat box. Post your questions there and staff will make sure that Dr. Yoon sees them. I now have the pleasure of introducing Scott Geller, 2020 president of the Bucks County Association of Realtors, who will be introducing our speaker. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Pam. So Lawrence Yoon is the chief economist and senior vice president of research at the National Association of Realtors. He oversees and is responsible for a wide range of research activity for the association. He regularly provides commentary on real estate market trends for our 1.4 million realtors. Dr. Yoon creates NAR's forecasts and participates in many economic forecasting panels. He appears regularly on financial news outlets, is a frequent speaker at real estate conferences throughout the United States, and has testified before Congress. Dr. Yoon received his undergraduate degree from Purdue University and earned his PhD from the University of Maryland at College Park. Go Terps! On behalf of the members of the Bucks County Association of Realtors, I welcome Dr. Yoon and thank him for taking time from his very busy schedule to give us an update on the economy and perhaps a look into the future. Without further ado, I present Dr. Lawrence Yoon. Uh, thank you, President uh, Scott Geller, uh, for inviting me uh, to participate. Uh, Bucks County, uh, you are in a, I would say, strategically a good location in this new economy. And what I mean by the new economy is that this work from home phenomena for the office workers particularly, I think it will become quite a, a permanent feature even after the vaccine is discovered. Uh, only 5% of the workforce work from home before the pandemic, but because of the pandemic, which was forced upon uh, us, uh, that roughly about one third of the current uh, workforce is working from home. Now, once the vaccine is discovered, I still anticipate uh, that uh, people will get flexible schedule, meaning that maybe they go to office two days a week or three days a week. Uh, we will see how everything plays out, but many of the chief executives of large corporations are quite surprised that productivity level is a good, if not better, in terms of providing that work from home flexibility. Let me uh, put the slide on the screen because as an economist, I speak uh, better uh, with the uh, screen. Hold on a second. Okay, so here we go. So first, uh, we have to acknowledge uh, the economic collapse that occurred during the second quarter but this was not somehow the economy was in a bad shape. It was just government forced lockdown. Uh, in Pennsylvania, I'm sure you know, uh, where the governor says, stay at home, don't go out. Uh, well, if people cannot conduct business activity, the economy will go down. This is only a temporary collapse because now all economies, all states have reopened their economy. And we are seeing uh, quite a large, uh, uh, activity. Now, we are not back to normal by any sense on broad economy. Housing market, fortunately, it is. Uh, but the broad economy is not back. So the GDP, the next number that will come out would be at end of this month, uh, towards the latter part of October, essentially a few days before the election. Uh, and it will show a tremendous positive number, something like plus 30% uh, GDP growth rate. Whether or not it makes any difference on presidential election outcome, changing people's undecided vote, maybe everyone has supported already, uh, who knows, but Pennsylvania, I think you will determine who will be the next president. So uh, we will be closely monitoring uh, what happens in Pennsylvania. Because of the economic collapse that occurred, there was a maximum liquidity policy by the central bank, Federal Reserve, cutting the interest rate essentially to zero for the Fed funds rate, 
uh, which is the reason why the mortgage rates are under 3% on average. Uh, so great opportunity for people who need to buy a home at this maximum liquidity policy. Not only is that helping out on the monetary policy front, but also the fiscal front. Massive stimulus package is blowing away the budget, uh, but we need to fix the economy. So there's less concern about budget deficit at the moment. Those are future year issues, but today we're saying let's fix the economy, which is the reason why people receive their stimulus check, the enhanced unemployment insurance benefits, and thank you, uh, President Scott Geller, in your uh, advocacy, which made a big difference uh, in Washington to assure that all independent contractors, realtors, are able to tap into the unemployment insurance during that difficult uh, first few months uh, during the lockdown. Uh, so a massive stimulus bill has uh, provided this uh, stimulus measure uh, into the economy. Now, let me turn to data that is not Pennsylvania and not economics. This is a GPS mobility data for two states, Utah and New York. Uh, and I will go into Pennsylvania, what, what it means. So everyone has a cell phone and as you move, uh, GPS can detect whether you are staying at home or moving out and about town. And what this shows is that before the pandemic as a reference is a zero line. Then during the lockdown, you see uh, it goes down, people are not moving. But in Utah, they decide to reopen their economy a little sooner. While in New York, Governor Cuomo decided to have a more stricter lockdown and for a longer period. So you see it in the data in terms of people's mobility in Utah, people are moving more. What's happening on the virus front? It looks like New York, after the initial big flare up, has largely contained the virus in the late summer. Uh, maybe it's beginning to tick up slightly right now, but at least on the virus front, uh, New York appears to uh, sort of minimize. By in Utah, they're seeing high number of new cases. Uh, thanks to the medical advances over the past few months, uh, you know, many of the new cases uh, that people, the survival rate is much, much higher you know, the, the, uh, than before. So, so this is what's happening on the uh, mobility and the coronavirus. Now, why do I bring this topic up? Because it's coming at a trade-off and huge cost. And here it is, in Utah, unemployment rate is going down and it's down to 4% currently because people can go out and about. Uh, now, hopefully people are following the CDC uh, guidelines, social distancing, face mask to minimize the spread, but at least the economy is going along. While in New York, economy is stuck at high unemployment rate, unemployment rate at 16%. These are like great depression level unemployment rate conditions. Uh, and you hear from the restaurant owners in New York City to say they may be permanently out forever uh, given the struggles they are facing. So it's a tough trade-off that many governors are facing as to do you contain the virus or do you reopen the economy? And certainly Governor Wolf in Pennsylvania decided to take more a stricter approach. Uh, it was one of the last states to permit uh, the uh, lifting the shelter in place uh, orders uh, but once the uh, governor lifted it, you know, you see a lot of home buying activity uh, that is happening uh, in Pennsylvania uh, currently. So if we look at all 50 states, the unemployment rate uh, you see here, Pennsylvania at 10.3%, which is a little above national average because Pennsylvania decided to have stricter lockdown for a longer period. But interesting part is all 50 states had very low unemployment rate in February before the pandemic. But once the pandemic occurred, you see the divergence, some state doing better than others economically. And again, I wanna remind people in Utah, the number of new cases on coronavirus is hitting new highs. So, you know, that's the trade-off that uh, many states are uh, factoring in. Let's look at the economy. This is the job situation over the past 20 years. So if you look at the middle of the chart, uh, it is the subprime-led job creation. We provided mortgages to anyone with a heartbeat without checking their income uh, and overstretched their budget. And what do you know? Uh, it imploded and we had the foreclosure crisis. So we lost jobs in the middle of the chart. From the low point, America experienced the longest economic expansion ever. 10 straight years of job creation, just marching forward. But in a single month of April, we lost all that job. 
So 10 years of job creation gone in a single month because of the government lockdown. But now as the economies are reopening, you see that recent data point shows that jobs are being created, but we are only halfway recovered. We need another 10 million job creation just to get us back up to normal. And it's gonna take some time. It may take one year, it may take 18 months. Uh, some industry could be permanently damaged. For example, airline industry. I think the business travel where they get a lot of business revenue, uh, that may completely change because of the Zoom technology, video conferencing, uh, less business travel. So some industry may undergo some permanent changes. So we'll see how it, everything plays out. We know that vaccine will be discovered either you know, later this year or early next year. But even with the vaccine, I think there will be some structural changes uh, that it would be long lasting. What about Bucks County? The job market looks like the following. So in a sense, it's almost similar movement as the national average. Let me go back to the US. I put that red line as a reference point in the year 2000 to show what happened. So let me go back to the US. US, you see year 2000, then the great recession of 10 years ago for closure crisis, and then uh, we had the lockdown in April. In Bucks County, uh, year 2000, you had a foreclosure crisis, and then you had job creation, and then lockdown actually went a little severe compared to national average because Pennsylvania had a stricter lockdown compared to the national average. But now you are beginning to see some job recovery occurring, but you still have long ways to go uh, in that regard. Where is the job losses coming from? Well, people working in the hotel industry, you know, the 35% reduction in the jobs in the hotel, restaurants, Home construction is mildly down, but I anticipate soon it will turn positive because we need to build more homes. Uh, office works like finance and insurance, people working in Manhattan, uh, their jobs are secure, even though they're not going to Manhattan, they're working from home. And they could easily be working from home in New Jersey suburbs, Connecticut suburbs, Long Island, or even in Pennsylvania. Uh, so you see uh, many people uh, working uh, from home. Uh, uh, with those who have finance or insurance uh, occupations. In terms of the wages, you see on the right chart that, uh, that varying uh, wages and economists talk about sort of K-shaped recovery to say people who are middle-class or above, they're faring reasonably well. Uh, their jobs are secure, they could work from home. Uh, if they have some exposure to the stock market, it's close to all-time high. If they're homeowners, their wealth are rising. But renters who, you know, working in the low wage industry like hotel and restaurants, I mean, their wages are not there uh, along with the jobs. So, you know, we have a divergent uh, path related to the economy. One thing that governors or uh, perhaps, you know, local public officials could do is people who lost job in hotel and restaurant possibly give them vocational training to go into construction because we need more jobs and certainly it pays far higher than working at a hotel or restaurant. So uh, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to align where the job needs are along with where unemployed people are. Personal income surprisingly is faster growth during the pandemic compared to normal years. During normal years, people with W-2 salary statement would rise three or 4% each year. Uh, realtor's income, as you know, uh, is a commission base. So sometimes your income could double. Other time you wish you had saved up more money for downturn. Uh, so it varies. But for most people on W-2 income, their income would rise three or 4%. But note how it, fast, it grew faster during the pandemic. And this is that enhanced unemployment insurance. Someone who worked at the department store got lost a job. And what do you know? Their unemployment insurance check is actually larger than the wages they were receiving uh, working as a cashier. Uh, so this has boosted income. Small business owners, including realtor uh, brokerages, uh, perhaps tap into small business administration loan. If you meet certain criteria, like paying salaries, paying rents, and things like this, uh, your loans will be forgiven. Uh, so you know people tap into that. And also does $1,200 stimulus checks, all that provided income boost. So what are people doing with this stimulus income? They are not spending. So consumer spending is actually below one years ago. First, if you have to stay at home, well, you cannot spend money. Uh, second, uh, if you are still hesitant about uh, doing indoor dining, I mean, I do uh, some outdoor dining locally, but I am still shy about going indoor, uh, you know, that's gonna hold back 
uh, some activity. And if you want to go see the Eagles play, forget it. You know, they are not allowing fans in. So all that is preventing the consumer spending to arise. And hence, uh, is preventing the growth in consumer spending, which also hence, once the vaccine is discovered, that could be unleashing of consumer spending into the economy because people have saved up their stimulus money. They have not just spent that money. So there is that potential. Let's see where people are spending and not spending money so far. Spending for beer, wine, liquor stores is up tremendously. Is this because people are uh, depressed and trying to drown out their sorrows? And answer is actually, uh, they're drinking about the same amount. They are not drinking at bars, they're just drinking at home. So it's more of a switch. Online shopping is up, no surprise, but maybe you did not know it was up 20% from one year before. People are at home, so they're spending more on gardening and home improvement. So uh, companies like Home Depot CEO is quite surprised how much revenue growth in Home Depot. Sporting goods, buying bicycles, hobbies. Again, people are bored at home, so they're spending more but not driving as much and gas station is down, restaurants are down. If you don't have to meet people in person frequently, why do you need new clothes? Uh, uh, and also uh, somehow the souvenir shop, I mean, they're getting hit really bad uh, currently uh, in the environment. What about spending on rents? There are some social activists who say because of the pandemic, we should cancel rent. And in fact, encouraging tenants to say, don't pay rent, don't pay rent. Now, fortunately, government policy as part of the stimulus measure is providing you know, uh, quite a uh, flexibility about rent payment or even the eviction orders uh, in the current environment. But let's look towards 2019 when the economy was good, 2019. Roughly 90% of the tenants were paying rents on time. That's in a good economy. Few people, day or two late, other people maybe months or late, and in some cases, eviction. In 2020, in the pandemic, Percentage is 88%, not so different from 90% of last year. And many apartment owners were quite surprised, happily, that it is holding up this well. And what Americans are saying is, look, I have my obligations. I signed the contract to pay the rent. I have the financial resources in terms of unemployment insurance. In the so that is providing the necessary fund to pay the rent. The key question is what happens in the upcoming months? because unemployment check amount is now lower uh, than before. Currently, President Trump and Speaker Nancy Pelosi is trying to negotiate what should be the right amount, uh, because if we provide generous amount, it will help on the rental payment, but maybe people don't wanna go back to work. So you know, what is the right amount in terms of trying to incentivize, get you know, people back to work versus trying to provide some level of support. Now for the good news, home sales after the plunge is robustly bouncing back, up 10% higher compared to one year before. August of last year, many realtors would have said, good year, respectable year. This year we are doing better. Possibly it is some of the delayed purchases that was missed in spring, now showing up uh, in late summer. New home sales up 44%. Whatever the builders are building, there's a demand for newly constructed homes. So new home sales flying off the shelves currently. Pending contracts up 20%, which is hinting that closing activity in autumn months would be one of the best autumn ever for the housing sector because pending is certainly leading uh, indicator for the closing. So uh, things are looking very, very good uh, related to the pending contracts. Even better news. What do realtors say to their clients to demonstrate seriousness? Get a mortgage approval. So what are people doing related to mortgages? It is booming. It is up 20, 30% higher compared to one year ago, depending upon which week we are measuring. In other words, there are plenty of people in the pipeline ready to hit the marketplace. This winter would be one of the best winter ever for home sales based on mortgage uh, application data. So autumn will be good, winter will be good, housing market clearly in a V-shaped recovery. You can see it on this graph, it's a V-shape. Now, uh, Vice President Mike Pence, he, last night during the debate, he mentioned about V-shaped uh, economy, economic recovery. Now, I would say that's probably a little bit of a stretch. Housing market, definitely V, rest of the economy, I think is still struggling along in terms of how it's coming around, uh, but housing market doing tremendously well 
uh, currently. Home ownership rate is rising consequently. Buyers are coming in and we are seeing home ownership rate increase across all demographic groups. Uh, the younger people, older people, uh, Asian Americans, African Americans, uh, white Americans, Hispanics, all rising, which is good news because this is the way to build wealth, become solid middle-class uh, citizens. But I question the latest data point. I know it's rising, but I don't think it is spiking up like what is shown on the chart because census changed their methodology. Normally what the census would do is randomly select a neighborhood, knock on the door and ask, are you an owner or a tenant? Uh, and based on that, they compute home ownership rate. They see an apartment complex, they assume everyone is a renter. So this is how a home ownership rate is computed normally, but not the latest data. Latest data due to COVID, they made phone calls, not walk the street. So phone call apparently has some biased results. I know home ownership rate is rising, but I know it's not spiking up as such. So please discount and you know, take it with a grain of salt, which are so hints. You know, all this presidential polling numbers that you see, you know, who is in the lead and so forth, it always has some standard error. I wonder if they are getting similar bias result like home ownership rate uh, computation uh, because, you know, they are uh, getting to do the phone uh, survey. But, but, you know, however it is, at least home ownership rate, I know they are not getting the act picture uh, relative to home ownership. One constraining factor is lack of inventory. Even last year, there was not enough inventory, but this year even uh, fewer, 20% fewer, which is the reason why multiple offers are becoming quite prevalent. Uh, and if you have inventory, it's almost good as gold because you're gonna find buyers uh, easily, uh, but trying to you know, find that inventory is becoming difficult uh, and multiple offer means there's one winner and multiple losers. Now losers are very upset. They have to start the process all over again. Uh, so it creates a lot of headache. So we need more inventory to smooth out the marketplace. So are we going to get any relief later this year? And answer unfortunately is no. And here's why. Way to get clean inventory is through housing starts. That is new home construction. If you have a new home construction, it's an empty home and often people trade up into that unit. As they are trading up, they're selling their existing homes, releasing that into the market. So that chain reaction, build new homes, we will have more inventory. So what are the builders doing? Their orange line is historical average. And the builders have been underproducing for 10 straight years. The cumulative effect of underproduction for 10 straight years is we don't have homes to, to sell. We need, we need more home building. So what happened? Well, during the pandemic, you saw a lot of governors said to the construction workers, go home, don't build home. We need to shelter in place. So he went down. Now that the economy is open, construction workers are back on site, but it will take several months to bring new homes onto the market. So this delay will not help us any way in terms of inventory this year. Only in 2021, next year, we may see some semblance of normal inventory a tight inventory condition for the remainder of this year. One permanent change, strong demand for buying home out in the suburbs, rural area, small towns, uh, away from city centers. Recreational area should be less than 10%, but now it's showing 13%, which means that Bucks County could be one of the big beneficiary of this trend. Not only are people saying, I don't have to live so close to Philadelphia, I don't have to live so close to New York City, uh, I can live farther away. And why is this trend occurring? When I talk with realtors, sometimes they make the remark to say, well, their clients are some the disturbed by some of the social unrest. Now, to social, you know, to bring the issue uh, of you know, every American should be treated with human dignity. You know, Black Americans should be treated, those are right issues to raise but some social unrest has turned violent, rioting, uh, and people don't like that. And they're saying, no, I'm gonna go to the suburbs where it's much safer. But the biggest driver for this trend is work from home. And I think this work from home will become quite a permanent feature of the new economy post pandemic, not work from home forever. Now Twitter has announced to their employees, you can work from home forever, so many people from Twitter are saying, I don't, I'm not gonna live in San Francisco, too expensive, small house. 
I'm going to Idaho, buy larger size house, buy a mansion. So you see that uh, happening in the San Francisco area. Facebook believes half of their employees could possibly work from home forever. But my take is that people will still go to office, but not five days a week. It will more be something like two days a week where they have uh, meetings, strategic meetings, uh, but other three days, you know, just work from home. Uh, he has shown uh, equal productivity. So if you don't have to commute so much, even to say New York City, why live close to Manhattan when one can buy a good mansion out in Bucks County uh, at more affordable prices? So you may begin to see this trend uh, continually developing over time. Another factor is someone who was very happy in Bucks County, three bedroom home, they were very happy, suddenly say, no, this home is insufficient. I need that fourth bedroom, fifth bedroom to turn it into office for myself and office for my spouse. So, you know, many people that this uh, demand would be arising. And uh, one other trend that we are seeing is uh, we looked at counties where they have many vacation homes versus the rest of the other counties. And we are seeing faster growth of home sales in vacation counties. Uh, I'm not sure if some of your audience members, you know, work in the Pocono Mountains. I think the demand is very, very strong. There, people are saying work from home can also mean work from vacation home. So we are seeing a very strong demand in uh, vacation uh, uh, counties that have many vacation homes. So going to the suburbs, the first wave was back in the 1950s. This is when many middle-class Americans had automobile for the very first time. And people say, Yahoo, I get to drive. So they were very excited uh, during that time. So they said, now I can buy a home out in the suburb and just drive into the city. We have to remember that during that time uh, that many subdivision had a specific covenant to say, if you are black Americans, we, can, we will not sell you that home. So we have to be just mindful, acknowledge uh, the, the bad policy that happened during the 1950s uh, related to the housing. Then the second wave really came from the uh, crime wave. I mean, Times Square in New York in the 1970s, just awful. You know, people are just trying to escape uh, into safe neighborhood. The third wave, which is more of a, my opinion, is this work from home, I think will become permanent feature. Keep in mind, we have more minorities already living in the suburbs even before the pandemic, whether African-Americans, Asian, Hispanics, uh, and fair housing law, not only is it the right thing to do, part of the real code of ethics, uh, but it's the law of the land. You violate it, you, know, you may lose your license. So please keep in mind and let's do the uh, right thing. So the forecast, my last slide is, Housing market, incredible V-shaped recovery. Home prices are rising because of housing shortage. Uh, I think my forecast could be quite conservative. People are saying, you know, they are seeing eight, nine percent price growth. Home sales, we missed the spring buying season, but the second half is so strong that I think we're going to make up for it. So uh, about the same as last year, but going into 2021, work from home phenomena. People who are unhappy with three-bedroom home, the secondary order lift and demand will uh, continue to provide fuel for home sales. So you are in a very good, well-positioned situation. Uh, so hopefully you can benefit from this uh, trend. Uh, and thank you for having me and thanks for uh, allowing me to share some of my thoughts uh, with you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Yoon, we do have one question. Um... Have you seen any data about how the introduction of a vaccine will impact the economy? Uh, what will impact the economy? The introduction of a vaccine. A vaccine. Oh, I mean, uh, you know, first uh, with a vaccine. First, I hope, uh, you know, some surveys showing like half of Americans will not take the vaccine. I don't know why, but, you know, people have some concern about that. You know, everyone has a uh, so uh, whether or not they want to, uh, they believe that some kind of herd immunity will naturally develop on its own. Uh, but if the, there is a vaccine, that means everything should go back to normal. But one thing that will not go back to normal is that again, the work from home phenomena. If we had pandemic five years ago, American economy would have been crushed totally because we didn't have broadband access. Today we have broadband access that permits us to do the Zoom technology. Another part is NAR, you know, again, you know, President Scott Geller is involved, is we are trying to push for broadband access in rural areas, rural communities, because you know, if you, you need to do schooling at uh, home 
uh, and also work from home, we need more broadband access to more rural communities. So we are pushing hard that in here in Washington advocacy. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions they wanna pose? Please put them in the chat box. And uh, not seeing anything coming up, give it two more seconds. Uh, I wanna take this opportunity, Dr. Yoon, to thank you very much. And we hope someday you can come to lovely Bucks County and uh, we'll, we'll show you the, the sites and uh, we'd really love to, to host you here. So uh, we hope that better times are coming, right? And yeah. thank you so much for your time. And I thank Scott Geller for his leadership. Uh, it was the education committee of BCAR that uh, has, has decided to put together the series of member events. And we've had terrific response to them. And again, keep an eye on your newsletters and your emails because uh, th there, more will be coming. We, uh, we do, I see a question. Uh, do you anticipate higher price increases in resale or new home prices? Uh, for both. Uh, so resale prices are, are rising. Uh, for home builders, I wish they focus more on starter home uh, and the uh, mid price, but the numbers don't work out because of higher material costs. Lumber prices are skyrocketing, and some you know we have to overcome some of the excessive uh, regulation uh, part. Uh, but we just need to build more home because I think there is you know one other trend we are seeing is a strong demand in the upper end market. Upper end market have been very soft last year uh, because of the limitation on property tax deduction on the federal income. But now upper end market is beginning to move. So we need uh, home building all across, empty inventory, uh, and that will lead to the chain reaction. But thank you so much for uh, uh, having me. Uh, and uh, I have to drop off. So uh, have a wonderful day, uh, everyone. Thank, thank, thank you for attending, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.